you know, tutor and 2D interaction, and then you know, looking at a script. So that's not big data, but it's from the data. But our frameworks is actually theory, technology, you know, the theories, technologies. Uh, if in the future, if I have time, I, I can talk about all the details and the applications and also impact the, you know, the applications. We're actually looking at application in uh, medical, in you know, teaching physics, uh, teaching mathematics and impact we use it to uh, looking at how it's going to be, you know, how it's used. This is more like efficacy study. So we work with uh, army and the navy. So in this case, the first icon is actually the, the, the army, the combat medic. The second one is also you know, working with army for for aftershock uh, kind of you know uh, triage programs. And third one is from the navy. It's actually called then you know PAL three, the personal assistant of learning. Uh, 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 lifelong learning, there are three R's, so in three L's, so it's called a P-A-L-3. This is our research framework, and this is actually the tutoring that we have. We, we, we only do one kind of tutor, we call the conversation-based tutoring. On um, this one, since from the, from the way we created the tutor, we claim that our tutor is human-inspired because we mimic how expert tutor and also how ordinary tutor, like a tutor from, you know, like a senior, seniors for the student uh, to teach a freshman or those kind of uh, tutoring sessions. They're not necessarily expert, but they are tutoring and are very efficient, effective. So we use those one as uh, like a, um, uh, inspired uh, to the production of our tutoring system. So here, what you see over here, this is the, I call it, I'm not sure what you, can you, can you see this? Yes. Okay. So those actually, uh, um, you know, this is auto tutor. We uh, we 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 called up. We have several names. Auto tutor was the original NSF project that we we have, and then later we make it as a framework. We called auto tutor framework. Basically, it's a conversation based tutoring system. Um, uh, but, um, Dr. Hu, uh, maybe it's better to like enlarge each slide. Okay. Now let's see whether we can enlarge. Let me see. Hold on. Uh huh. Yeah. Thank you. How about this? Okay, now can we move? That's great. That's great. Yeah, that's better. Now you can see that, um, you know, the first one, that this one, the first diagram, we call, we call it expectation misconception tailored dialogue. The basic idea is uh, the tutor asks the student a question, okay, and the tutor needs to prepare expected the right answers and also expected the typical misconception. And then as soon as the system detects the student actually uh, covered expectations, that's great. You don't have to do anything. And also if the tutor dis dis discovered that the student actually exhibits certain misconception and the you know, tutor is going to help them. Now, mm -hmm. most importantly is when the tutor, when the system find out, oh, the student did not fail to cover one of the expected answers, and then the, tu the, the, the tutor is going to give, could give uh, hints prompts or if nothing helps just give them the, the answer we call, it, we call it elaboration so what you have over here this is a typical kind of tutor assistant say uh if you, you i can read it and yeah, say well suppose a boy in a free falling elevator and he holds a key uh motionless in front of him and then let go what will happen to the key so the free falling elevator so this is a typical physics problem it's one of the physics uh, like a newtonian physics uh uh, uh, called the called the force concept inventory problem. Okay. So these are the how the dialogue moves. You know, give it a prompt. If the student have no uh, nothing to say, the prompt says, "I bet you can explain the, this a little bit more," or you know, say something. Right. So that's a prompt for the student to give a response. And if the student give a response but not right, and then this one we're going to give a hint. So what ha what about the acceleration of the object involved? So that asking a specific expectation. That's 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 the kind of th um, things there. And then this one here, this this one is actually uh, 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 one of the ONR uh, grant challenge pro project we have done, and uh, for the uh, mathematics. So we teach a student uh, reading comprehension. So this is the explanation of mathematics, and we actually creating this, uh, 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 a few of avatars to converse with the learner and then trying to uh, help them to understand the importance of each of the step, uh, you know, like that. 
So now you realize this kind of uh, conversational system applicable to everything, not only just qualitative content and also quantitative content as well. Now this is a little bit more elaborated because you know you, you end up having uh, uh, a, 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 a variety of different ways of asking uh, a student and also have different uh, dialogue moves. So what you see over here is actually implement, you know, this one here, this is the original EMT. Mm -hmm. this is actually the dialogue moves because you want to prepare a lot of things. Right. For example, when a student answered this way versus the other, or when, when a student answered a wrong question, uh, you ask a hint for one expectation. The student actually answered the question that the answered, and then actually cover expectation of another. So there were a lot of issues there, or a, a lot of dialogue moves. So this is actually called the rule dialogue rule. So um, just sorry, just like to ask a question. So mm -hmm. each one of these uh, images is mm -hmm. like a. a a branching tree, it's, is it only for one question? That's it's for one, one question. <laughs> only for one question, right? Yes, yes, only for one question. Now, um, so here, they're only for one question or one type of question, I would say this, because mm -hmm. there are generic rules, generic uh, rules, for example, if you fail to answer anything, uh, I can give you, okay, you know, try, uh, trying to think harder or trying to, you know, uh, um, the, the think the other, the, from the other perspective. Those kind of feedback probably is content neutral. There's no, not, not, do not have to be content specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Yeah. So there are content specific feedback or there are some kind of content neutral, like a meta feedback. So there are um, a lot of uh, ways psychologists that knows how to, you know, just, get things out of the, the people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, for the uh, left bottom, mm -hmm. the, the graph, why the graph is so tangled? Okay, so that's a, so right now, the whole thing, this is that, you know, if you consider that in, in ITS, in ITS there are, you know, Kurt Van Lang, one of our, our one of the researchers that we worked with me in the, in, the, in the past, he's very famous in terms of um, uh, trying to, uh, classify different kind of uh, uh, um, uh, tutoring, you know, uh, moves. One is called the outer loop. Basically says what to learn next. Mm -hmm. The other one is called a inner loop. It's how do you learn next? Oh, okay. So what you have over here is actually the outer loop. This, each one of them is a concept. Okay. Is it from one concept to another? Now, this specific picture is actually based on a theory called the learning space theory. Um, that's something that, uh, that one of my mentors actually pioneered that theory and then implemented in, in Alex, uh, which is another software, mathematics software that- yeah, uh, yeah, very famous. Yes. So that's actually from learning space. Yes, those mm -hmm. are the picture. Um, um, you know, maybe in the future I can uh, can send some references for for those. Oh, so the left bottom is for the outer loop. Yeah, this is outer loop, and this is you know. Okay, got it. This is inner loop. Okay. Okay. So now, so in other words, this is what we call the human inspired because we actually observe this is actually from the human, right? And then research based. So it's actually behind this implementation, we actually have a lot of uh, um, um, uh, uh, learning you know, theories behind. For example, in this case, there is a tw this is 25 learning principles that Grazer, my colleague, actually, when he, uh, when he uh, uh, was uh, the, the editor of the educational psychology, he has uh, this uh, inaugural editorial for this, uh, for this one. He summarized 25 learning principles. Actually, mm -hmm. Quite of other uh, uh, you know, agencies uh, summarize other, you know, from other perspectives. So, for example, this is APA, uh, American Psychological Associ Association. I have the 20, princip 20 learning principles of mm -hmm. teaching. And then those things go very, very deep. For example, in this, in this 29, uh, 25 learning principles, one of them is actually called the deep questions. So when you're trying to learn, when trying to teach, you have a very, you, you have a way, a special way of asking deep questions, right? So this is also from Art Grazer and his uh, student. And then he classified the 16 different kind of questions separating from shallow, intermediate, and deep, okay? Mm -hmm. So in our auto tutor, we, most of the time we ask deep questions. So those are the, the different questions, but the, the different questions. 
Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I'm saying this. I'm saying this for two reasons. Do tutoring system. When we build, a, we, when we build a, a, a tutoring system, we no longer, in our mind, the page turning from one to another is not necessarily something that we we uh, we do anymore. We actually build a lot of logic behind recommending and also uh, you know assess a student and inputting. So we literally treating our tutoring system like a human. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, since we treat our hu- the system like human, then there is a strong reason for us to really you know treating like a, like a human. So the next thing here. It's a, it's a, it's something that uh, that uh, we um, uh, let me see, make it smaller because I forgot I, I lost that. So now the next one over here. Oops. So w- then we realize what we, what we're doing is actually one of the major major problems in 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 in, in engineer, in engineering. So now see this one here. I'm not sure whether you know that this website is called National Engineer of uh, National Academy of Engineer Engineering. It's a, it's a, you know, for the U.S. led uh, organization, but it's worldwide. Yeah, identify the challenge of the century, for this century. One of the things is actually advanced learning and personalized learning. Mm-hmm. So once we do this one, we realize if you look at what we have over here, this one, we are basically doing engineering, although software engineering. But if you look at those wires, things like this, it's almost no, you know, no different from we building a robot with a lot of wires uh, coming out of those, uh, you know, those those, uh, those uh, bodies, right? So it's actually mm-hmm. an engineering problem. So in order to solve that, so this is the framework that we, we want. In order to really looking at this one, we need to really consider uh, uh, the whole thing in a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, in fact, that when I was, uh, you know, I'm also involved in some of the meetings with uh, with artificial intelligence. You know, there are a lot of AI meetings around, mm-hmm. and we we think we're doing AI. You know, we always say, "Oh, we are AI ad. We're doing artificial intelligence in, in education," but actually, we do not do AI, or at least we do not explicitly do AI like uh, people were really doing AI. For example, if you ask uh, anybody in, in here. I, if I ask uh, uh, Alan or, or you know, Michael, I say, okay, what kind of artificial intelligence you're doing? Well, you can say, well, I, I implement some uh, algorithms. But if you, if you talk to people like in real AI, they're going to ask you, are you really using a strong AI or weak AI? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure whether anybody can make that kind of you know, claim because we never even, we, we, we implement algorithms almost like individually. We never treat them as a human. Or at yeah. least not yet. So you wanted to make that the distinction of this research perspective. There's, this is this is actually our, our research framework that are from from us, from me and our, my my colleague here. Okay, so there is a one assumption of called the research and development framework for this kind of work. It's a symmetry assumption: the human learner and then certain learning resources, like reading learning contents, are symmetric in the context of learning environment and the process. In other words, when we looking at the, the interaction between learner and, 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 and the system, from a data perspective, they're symmetric. I'm not sure whether that, that, that idea come across. In other words, if you're really treating, you know, if, if you look at the, what we're learning is, you know, if you really consider, uh, if from complete outside of the 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 the, the, the you know lot the, the, you look at this system not like a, from a human or from a computer is actually a stimulus response kind of a pattern that in the alternate kind of you know uh, uh, ground. So for example, I ask a question to the computer, computer response, and the computer give me a question, well, I response. Right. So from that perspective, it's just the stimulus response. You know, my input is the stimulus for the computer, and computer, you know, uh, you know pop up something that's my st- my you know stimulus, and then I respond. So if you from that perspective, the whole scenario is is a symmetric. So this one is actually a boom. And then, of course, from my research, we study the mechanisms between the learner and the, and the, and the, and the system. So this is the. The research focus the interaction mechanism, but the symmetric assumption of this one. Based on this assumption, then the symmetric assumption of learning environments require XAPI profile for human-like AI-enabled adaptive instructional system. From that perspective, 
we need to have this, okay? Now, then you want to say, how do you do that? Because we know that the human, you know, if you use X API, we have a set of verbs, activities, you know, attempted, or in other kind of environment, like a, like a you know, uh, um, uh, uh, failed or, or things like that. We can you know, observe human behavior. Now, what is computer behavior? Uh, the system computer the behavior. But it turned out the system behavior is actually much, much simpler. <laughs> much, much simpler. And actually, we know. We know. Uh, um, that, that's a quick yeah. question. Yeah. Think, yeah, yeah uh, question. My question is um, the framework that you're using mm -hmm. is, is based on a model of the learner's cognitive processes, or is it based on your assumptions about how the concept should be taught? How does that develop? Okay. That's. Great question, great, great idea. Let me then finish, then I will tell you, you know, where the, where the punchline uh, at the end. Perfect, yeah. thank you. Well, that's, the, that's actually, the, the question you're asking is actually exactly the, 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 the approach that I want to take and also, uh, um, you know, trying to extend the XAPI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so far we say, well, this is from, you know, this is assumption, this is a theoretical assumption. You know, this assumption probably, I mean, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's giving a new way of approaching the learning, making the learning a response, you know, the interaction between learner and the learning, you know, resources, a symmetry. So we actually completely looking at it from the behavior perspective. We, data are behavior, the data are behavior, you know, uh, mm -hmm. observe behavior. The underlying mm -hmm. mechanisms is inferred. We do not actually know. We have to infer them, but our observation is behavior, you know, interactions, right? Mm -hmm. So from the behavior perspective, there's no reason of treating machine not like human. In other words, they are just like a, you know, response and a stimulus kind of thing. So that's, uh, that's what we have. Okay. So now, if we go back over here, every single one of the, 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 the things over here, the, 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 the application over here, it's almost the same. It's all efficient, effective AIS, adaptive, adaptive inf uh, instruction system implementation, are necessarily theory driven and research based with designed personalities. Okay, in other words, every single tutor that we produce, okay, we, we are doing it very carefully. We implement one principle or a combination of very efficient principle together. So they have a designed personality, okay? So, so far, okay, if that's the case, then we actually need to have another, you know, dimension for our profiles. Right now, if you look at XAPI profile, we have the profile for video, for, for, for uh, virtual learning or you know, thing and so on and so forth. All our profiles almost entire, almost based on the specific platforms, specific kind of you know learning environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're not having a theory like a kind of theory kind of a, a, a profile. For example, mm -hmm. we do not have a profile says okay we want to have an XAPI profile for conversation based tutoring system. Okay, because when we do conversation based system, we should have a specific. Uh, 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 verbs or learning activities corresponding to each one of those questions. For example, oh, this one here is asking judgmental questions. Uh, this one is asking questions. What questions? That it's a, it's a, you know, uh, enablement questions. Mm -hmm. Those things are theory driven from kind of psychology, from research. Um, you know, think about this. Think about what we, we, we have, okay? If, if I, I want to give you the following, following uh, you know, like analogy. When we go to the gym, okay, we either do, go do cardio or we say, okay, we want to, we want to practice muscle of our, our arm. And mm -hmm. then sit, go to that bench, right? Mm -hmm. Because that specific bench really tailored to practice the muscles here. Mm -hmm. The same thing with learning, right? So, okay, say, if you say, geez, you know, I really have problem understanding the, the three, you know, the three dimensional, uh, you know, you know, views on, on this geometric kind of issues. So I said, okay, here's the problem I want you to, 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 to work on. Mm -hmm. That specific problem is intended to have some purpose to enhance or correct your some kind of cognitive, you know, uh, like, a, like a functions. Yes. So we need, that's why I think, you know, we need to have um, 
a, a profile that actually tailored to the specific counting principles. So now you're looking at a profile with the kind of two dimensional profile. One is the environment. Mm -hmm. Second one is actually perpendicular to this environment. Like, okay, what, what is the method you are, you are, you are teaching? Mm -hmm. What theory is that you build the system? So, so from that uh, perspective, so here, here's what I did, okay? So we have this, uh, this, uh, this is called uh, this one here. We have this ONR project, the, you know, the Office of Naval Research Project. So we actually build this thing here, build this, uh, this, uh, this tutoring system, you know, thing. And then we just simply using a uh, learning locker, okay? Mm -hmm. Then I send a statement. So when I do this, I'm not limited by the verbs and activities that are having in ADL thing. I say, okay, I'm gonna try to do this because if you look at this following, if you look at this, we observe, what we observe just the system response to student input, right? But we actually know which path the system actually going through because we designed this, we designed the, the, the robot, right? We designed this. So, we, so, sorry, so, so far it's a rule based, am I right? Well, it is a rule based, it's a probabilistic. So in other words, it's not like, it's not like a pure if then, it's if then, but the, the, the criterion is actually based on semantic match, which is not like a, you know, like a, a traditional AI, a predicate calculus kind of, you know, a rule. So it, it's like a rule based, but the, uh, not 100% rule based. Yeah, it's it's a it, you know, let, let, let me try to uh, to to uh, to uh, you know share another thing uh, that you can you probably can can, can see that uh, a little bit clearly. Okay, so let me just. Uh, so, um, um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an example of the, how this works, and also do the learning record story and see how this data are recorded. How about that? Sure. Okay. So I'm, I'm actually doing the other one over here. So um, I'm going to turn this one on and while it's loading so I can uh, do this. So now we go back to this, uh, this, uh, this poster here. So let me give you this example. I will give you this, this example and then see how, uh, how, how the, the data is recorded. So now I'm going to use this one here. I'm not sure whether you can see. You can see that the, the talking head on, on coming on? Yeah, I think it's coming out. Okay. Uh, still blank now. Yes, yeah, still blank. Yeah. See it? Yeah, see it. Okay. Shengen, for the next topic, we are going to talk about transistors. Transistors act like a switch, right? Yes, they can. Let's get started. In the silicon NPN transistor shown in the figure, consider the requirements that would activate the motor. Shangan, why does only the saturation mode of operation allow the transistor to run the motor? Okay, did you see that? That's actually this example, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say uh, I just say, simply says, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, which mm -hmm. is the, um, uh, common responses. Let's work through it together. Let's try this together, Shengen. If the transistor works as a closed switch, how does it run the motor? Okay, so that's a typical kind of interaction, right? So now I'm going to show you what, uh, what, what the data have been recorded. Okay, so this is actually data, you know, I, I have the time the clock is run, so this is not eight minutes ago. This is actually current. Right? So now, if this is a learning locker, right? So we have, basically says who did what and what, the, you know, so on so forth. So this is a typical kind of, uh, you know, a uh, 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 statement. So Shang and who listened to Steve, this one, uh, um, basically, you know, on, on this. So in other words, this is the auto tutor, you know, this is basically Iris one. But you also consider, you also see this one, the outer tutor. See, this is subject, this is subject right now. Evaluate my input. Oh, okay. Okay. And also this one specifically that outer tutor, that I want to say what outer tutor, what outer tutor did while I'm first getting into it. Okay. So now if you look at this one, now outer tutor is, is, is subject. 
and the verb is is a transition. You know, remember, you know, this is this is like actions that uh, the behavior that the altitude, you know, that the system has. Yeah. So now, I actually record a lot of actions behind. You know, for example, the altitude is always decided. You know, trying to do a hint and then use the can expression, and also sometimes it says the you know the 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 altitude. I feel like okay, you have you know the student have a, have a confusion that I need to save that one for the later use and so forth. Okay, so this way here is actually XAPI using auto tutor as a subject and the me and the environment as the object and the activity and, and, and the extensions, conditions. Mm. So now you realize when, I, when I'm in response to this one, when I'm in response, the system actually goes to those things, goes through those things. And then XAPI recording them, okay? And then the profile needs to be theory driven. You know, for example, what kind of, a, uh, what kind of, um, 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 you know, say, what kind of uh, um, uh, theories it's been using and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, does that make sense? Yeah. Let me, let me try to. To uh, to uh, to uh, show you another one that, that how do we do that? In other words, what what is the um, the the thing that we 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 have? So let me show you how do we want to make this one available and then to the uh, XAPI. Uh, so let me just go one more uh, thing over here uh, about how the script is built. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, do the do the script. Um, um, <clears throat> So once you have this, once you have this, then you can uh, almost treating the, the tutor as the, the, the thing that you build like a human. So you say this specific tutoring is built based on what theories and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna show you this one very, you know, very briefly, then we, then we come to the conclusion and then we can have a discussion. So this one here, you know, this is what I showed you, showed you right? So now, mm -hmm. If you look at the second, you know, this one over here, this is actually, the, you know, using the, the machine or computer as subject and then computer actions as a verb. So now you realize we actually opened the can of, of worm because there are a lot of verbs that actually describe the in, inter kind of actions of, 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 of cognitive processes. And we use Twitter to really implement the cognitive processes. So now, so now you say, well, each one of those tutoring that one that I showed you, this is actually a script. This is authoring that I that I made for the for the for the for the for the tutors. So here, this one here, this other tutor is to look at these questions. You know, what does the uh, you know this is actually the the the, the one of those uh, you know, questions. So what you want to do is actually you can do the following. You can you you can you can have the long. Okay, so what I did is I have the, the LOM, the learning object the, uh, metadata, have a learning science extension, and this learning science extension actually characterize or specify what kind of tutoring system that you're doing. Okay, mm -hmm. and then, you know, for each one of those, for example, you know, you can have this, this is, this is, you know, I'm just giving you the deep questions. So this is the deep question, and so where is that? Yeah. So this is the describe and you define what this question, you know, deep questions and the, what the research behind. So this is actually, uh, maybe I, you know, when I have more time, I can explain this one in more detail. So this one actually, and also what kind of questions you are asking, you know, this is a, this is a interpretation questions versus causal consequence questions or simply verification questions or things like that. So this is actually goes with the, the, the learning objects or then, you know, the, um, the scripts. And then in this learning record store, you actually use that to analyze. Okay, with this information, with this is uh, uh, rich information of the learning, the, the, the actually the learning content. Okay, then the LIS will enable a holistic research that not only consider how people learn, we also can examine how system behave. Mm -hmm. Then the whole symmetry, the whole symmetry idea over here, the symmetry basically says if 
in the interaction between learner and the content. Okay, learner, of course, I learn. I my knowledge, you know, you know, you know my 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 knowledge structure changed, right? Mm -hmm. I learned new things. Yeah. Yeah. But in the meantime, in this scenario, in this symmetry kind of framework, machine yeah. also supposed to change. Yeah, I How see. How do we do that? How do we do that? We actually use the same method. How to instruct a human to learn, we can instruct computer system to learn. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the holistic you know, approach. So that's, you know, th that, that's why I think we need to expand the XAPI not only have a profile based on learning environment, based on language, but we need to have a perpendicular dimension actually based on learning theories. How the system, how the specific system built, and then based on the specific system or theory behind and the producing profile. Yes, yes. So that's, that's, that's actually uh, the, the everything I want to talk about. I think, um... They, um, you might have some question for Dr. Hu. Yeah, uh, maybe. I, I, yeah, just raise your question. Yep. Uh, this is Alan. Yep. I, I, I really enjoyed your presentation. I'm a great fan of uh, uh, tutors. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was just thinking uh, if it's possible to do the same with teachers and treat them uh, with the same. Uh, uh, labels as well, so it, it's not just artificial uh, intelligence. It's also uh, teachers that can be characterized in the same way. Are you exactly. thinking? Yeah. So is that what you're trying to get to? So, so for example, one of uh, two of my students that we, we're trying to do the following. So right now we say, okay, here, let's just take one of the most popular MOOC, and then we. It's almost like we analyze the, each one of the lecture every five minutes. We say, well, what this person five minutes Neo did? In a very simple one, say, well, uh, we know that when, when, when teach, give, teacher gave the lectures to students, sometimes they can ask questions. They say, what do you think about this? So the, it's, most of the time, this is teacher ask question, but uh, you know, since in the MOOC, no, no student answered the question because that's just videos. So we say, okay, let's look at what the frequency of the, the, you know, the questions the teacher asking in class and then correlate them with the, the effectiveness. And then and what I'm expecting is the more deep reasoning questions you ask in class, the better students will learn. But nobody document that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of, of course, of course, you know, when you want to give you specific examples, and there is different the teaching, you know, philosophy that every every teacher, you know, uh, follow. So their teaching philosophy probably, you know, you know, consistent with the you know learning principle that uh, he, you know, he he knows the truth. So, um, so this is a relevant question. So, um. Maybe uh, there will be a assistant for teacher, and uh, the, the assistant can um, hint the teacher what question to ask. In um, different contexts. So, so right now, for example, there was a <clears throat> there was a lot of things that we we do. You know, we, we have a consortium that are doing this. Um, there are a lot of rooms uh, that a, a lot of research. Uh, can be it's actually enabled by XAPI because XAPI is serving as a as a master kind of memory. Okay, so far, for example, remember we 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 were we we're looking at the, the almost the zero adaptive kind of content like a page turning. You know, I I page turning this way in the morning and in the afternoon. You know, tomorrow it's the same, right? And mm -hmm. then what ITS we say, oh geez, you know your your feedback is actually based on your your responses, but that's only at the local. Right now, we're trying to make the following kind of research, uh, a very simple experiment going on. Here's, here's a simple example. Remember what I typed to say, I, I do not know, right? Mm -hmm. If we do, if we, we actually did not treating the, the, the tutor as a real human. If I'm a professor, if I ask, uh, you know, the student, what do you think about this? If yesterday they say, I do not know. If I'm asking question today, you still say, I do not know. I will say, what? What the you know heck is going on? You need to do something because I asked the question yesterday. You don't do anything. <laughs> you do not know, mm -hmm. right? That's that's like a, what a human would do, but a yeah. computer doesn't do that. 
what happens if we actually go to the X API, we know exactly what time you are asking the question and what answer you have. I can simply say, well, yesterday at 1030, I asked the same question you said do not know. And now 25 hours later, you answer the same. Did you really do study or something like that? You know, in other words, that will, ha will, that will you know, creepy, you know, have a creepy kind of thing for the student. The student no longer can fool the online system, all because I remember, you know, what you have done, right? So without, that, without X API, without the kind of master mm -hmm. memory behind, it's mm -hmm. not that easy, right? So mm -hmm. that's something that, uh, you know, and that is truly treating the tutoring system, the online system like a human. <laughs> so okay. let me ask, uh, let me go back to my original question, which really mm -hmm. had to do about the relationship between the framework and a model of the learner's cognition. Mm -hmm. You know, the, these kinds of systems um, uh, create refined models that attempt to classify the learner to some extent. I mean, I'm, I'm putting it in the most crass way. Um, and the more fine grained you can be in that process, the more it seems humanistic in its processes. So. Mm -hmm. Um, are you starting with a single model or multiple models of how the learner might address the content? And are you dealing with higher order cognitive processes and that might be generalized across their learning? Or is it really all content specific, domain specific knowledge? It's a, it's a, it's a very, it's a starting with one model first. Yes. Okay, here's a, here's a, let me, let me do this one here. Let me show this one one more time and then you can see why we want to start one, uh, one model, model first. This is actually, um, it, you can say, uh, one hand is, you can say an imitation, but on the other hand, it's probably an advantage. Sure. Okay. okay. First, there is a following assumption, which is pretty much true, okay? Especially when the, the data we observe in the U.S., First, the tutor, the tutor, the, the tutor is not professional tutor. We all have like a senior student actually learned this one, you know, like a two years ago, and they feel like they want to earn some extra bucks and then just go to the, the, the tutor like a you know, junior or a freshman, right? Right. So there's a few things that are implied or inherently in the tutor. First, I do not want to lose face. In other words, I do not want to expose how bad I am or how low my knowledge is, right? So from the start, the tutor will have a certain rule. So I, tutor, ask a student a question, and the student is obligated to respond to my question. Mm -hmm. I do not answer a question from the student mm -hmm. because maybe I have no idea what you're going to do, no answer with, with yours. That's why they call the EMT. If, if I'm, if I'm, you say, if I only spend 30 minutes to refresh my memory about, uh, you know, my, about my concept of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, one, I guess, okay. I actually could not remember other things, anything in chapter three. I could not remember. So I ask you, say, well, what, give me the definition of some measure of central tendency. The student responds to me. Since student cannot ask me a question, so I have no chance for the student to detect how weak I am, <laughs> okay? Ah. And then, because student need to answer my question because, and also I have very well prepared how to correct their misconceptions, how to give a hint of an expectation. For any student to correct responses, I can positively give feedback. For any of the possible or misconceptions students have or mistakes, I can criticize this very, very eloquently. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So now, you, from that perspective, we can build a specific tutor, very, very good tutor, very, very narrowly defined, one model at a time. For example, remember, I can have, uh, you know, that the, uh, there are 16 different questions. I can make myself perfectly asking one of the questions. Like, for example, there's a question like a causal concrete, causal concept uh, 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 and the citizen's question. I can prepare that. Okay. So that's in other words, mm -hmm. we have to avoid that. So in other words, we build things like the Legos. We build pieces. Okay, right. you build enough pieces, then I have like a new uh, a room, right? So that's that's the it, uh, it, 
have you have you worked on trying to couple this with some sort of metacognitive tool for the learner? Because that introspection and that engagement that you can't handle yes. still seems like it's an important part of the learning process. And and if it's not the way you can engage with the the tool set you're provided, it seems like there should be another outlet for that. Yes. So so now well we this one, this this EMT is actually one on one tutoring. And then later we actually have the multiple agents. Okay. So we actually can accommodate those kind of metacognition kind of things from not from the teacher, but from the you know good student yeah. perspective, from bad student perspective, or even from the psychic. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. So those things, everything over there, all the interactions over there, including click and everything, logged into the into the system from the, the learner's perspective, and everything goes on behind, goes to the 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 the, the, the X API statement that was the the system as the as the uh, the the subject. I, I've got another question, if it's okay. Okay. Uh, the, uh, is there a possibility in the future? Is there enough information captured that you could round trip and actually kind of generate models for your cognitive tutors uh, from okay. the? I think that's 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 a very very good question. And right now, for example, in in the, in the ITS that we have, and, you know, I just had um, the meeting. We call the AIS. There's an IEEE uh, subcommittee called Ad Adaptive Instructional Systems. We're looking at uh, a lot of issues, the standard issue, and also most importantly, how to make a system that self improve. Mm -hmm. Okay, their self improve is actually the, the symmetry. The human improve, the computer improve, right? Now, how do we improve? We actually need to have a model and also have a way of capture the, 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 the system's behavior. And then we use the behavior, make recommendations for the improvement. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then in the future, we, you know, our goal is building, instead of building multiple kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, like, uh, yeah, like a courses, we probably build a one that actually are tailored to the specific, it's more like a professor, you know, you, can, you, 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 you talking to different people with different ways, you know, you, 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 you adapt. I was thinking about the, sorry, this is the last thing I'll say. No, uh, I was thinking about the MOOC, uh, which has the great advantage of size, and also about Google and, you know, the capture yep. stuff. Mm -hmm. So it seems obvious that if you can get the annotation uh, from uh, more automated over the MOOCs, then you could uh, really accelerate the round tripping and the expansion of the, your models. So that's a really nice uh, angle that you're going at at the moment. Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, what you are, you're talking about is certainly, uh, something that uh, 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 opens our mind to uh, potential kind of, you know, implementations. And that is actually the goal that I want to, when Jason was asking me that I, I said, oh, let me share this with you. I know that uh, as soon as we look at things from different, different perspective, we all will have our wild, uh, you know, new minds on, on, on different possibilities. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I actually need to have a meeting, uh, you know, in, in about the five minutes, another, uh, this is actually an uh, ADL call. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, Dr. Hu, uh, can I say you are aiming at strong AI? Um, very likely. This, uh, you know, we, we, we started with a narrowly defined kind of a conversation. This is like a, you know, weak because we only look at specific ones but when we assemble them together it's really approaching a general kind of uh, 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 cognitive uh, process right yes. uh, and uh, when this system gets smarter and smarter um it's it's uh, subject independent can i say that um i think it's not necessarily you know, subject independent i think it's uh, they always consider the content a specific kind of tutoring or versus neutral or meta kind of tutoring it's it's really hard to say i actually have two versions i i, I can find an, i can find a time to talk about another version which is almost completely subject uh neutral uh -huh. because you 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 have the learning theory there and also the the shadow deep question framework and are, uh, do you need to write every question for every course, every subject? 
At or time, they can generate? <laughs> at this time, yes. <laughs> okay, I see. We're still collecting data. You know, we have to, you know, uh, do, do, do that. Uh-huh. Okay, I need to go. I need to, uh, you Thank know, get you. Uh, Yeah. But, you know, nice, uh, you know, thanks for the comments. And, I, you know, I, I'm enjoying meeting with, uh, with this meeting. And thank you, JC, for, for, for giving me the opportunity. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm a professor, so don't get me started. I, I, I can talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Dr. Ho said at the beginning that if you have questions um, where you, um, you want to discuss with him, you can write email to him. Yes, write email to me. Okay, thank you. Okay.